welcome viewers to yet another video from dr raktim mukherjee and this time i shall be talking about the g protein coupled receptors wherein the examples are deal with calcium as a second messenger system in my earlier videos we talked about inositrite phosphate signaling pathway where the ip3 when bound with the endoplasmic reticulum calcium channels they led to influx of calcium from endoplasmic reticulum into the cytosol and we also talked that this calcium also acts as a second messenger system here in this video we shall dedicate exclusively on the role of calcium at a second messenger system first i will begin my video with a very important question and that question is why calcium is important intracellular messenger there are two reasons ascribed to it first even the smallest changes in cytoplasmic calcium concentration can be detected second calcium ions interact strongly with proteins and throughout the length of my video i will be discussing these two points but to begin with i will talk about the smallest changes in cytoplasmic calcium concentration that can be detected so calcium concentration first we will talk during steady state and for this i would like to have or focus your attention to this diagram at the corner at steady state the concentration of calcium in the cytosol is very minimal it is only when it is activated it increases we will talk in detail the exact scientific reason or the biochemistry based reason why calcium is so less in the cytoplasm and why calcium is all locked in the endoplasmic reticulum we will state the reason so during steady state there is very low calcium concentration as low as 100 nanomolar that much low concentration of calcium is there why this calcium is so low during this steady state this is because the calcium ions can readily bind to negatively charged regions of proteins so you know calcium as the name calcium is ca2 plus this calcium ca2 plus can readily bind with the negatively charged proteins i will put in this way protein the negatively charged so it will form a complex and these complexes will be insoluble complex and these insoluble complex if it deposits this complex if it deposits in the cytoplasm it will be harmful to the cell and that is the reason that calcium is always found at very minimal concentration of 100 nanomole within the cytosol in the steady state and this is the reason that cell pumps out majority of the calcium so whatever calcium is there in the cytosol all those calcium all those calcium is there in the cytosol the cell will pump out and it will store in this er that is endoplasmic reticulum now the intrinsically low levels of cytoplasmic calcium since the calcium concentration in the cytoplasm is very less this is the reason that even if there is a small amount of change in calcium the cell can immediately detect those changes 
So intrinsically low levels of cytoplasmic calcium allows the cell to detect the smallest possible changes in the concentration of calcium. Why calcium ions react strongly with proteins? We have to understand why calcium ions react strongly with proteins. What is the biochemical basis? So entire life sciences is more about biochemistry and that is why we need to understand the reason. What is the biochemical basis for this strong reaction with proteins? We all know that what is the charge of calcium? Calcium is positively charged. It is having plus 2. So the positive charge of 2, the calcium can form strong interaction with negatively charged side chains of proteins as also the oxygen atoms on the carbonyl groups of the protein backbone. Because calcium is positively charged, it can interact with most of the negatively charged side chains and oxygen atoms and the carbonyl groups of the protein backbone. And that in general we said that positively charged calcium deals with the negatively charged portion of the proteins in the previous part. But which are the negatively charged proteins, parts of the proteins? One, the negatively charged side chains. Two, the oxygen atoms of the carbonyl groups of the protein. These are the two areas which strongly react with the positively charged Ca2+. Because of this, or as a result, the calcium binds to protein, it can cause three different changes. One, conformational change in the protein structure. Two, once the protein structure changes, this in turn can link different domains. And by linking of different domains, it can stimulate the activity of target protein. And that is why calcium is such a powerful signal transduction molecule or a second messenger. It is for this reason that calcium is widely used as a second messenger. Calcium participates in many signaling process. The properties. One, fleeting changes in calcium are readily detected. We already discussed this. Second, intracellular level are low to prevent precipitation of carboxylated or phosphorylated compounds. Calcium is widely used second messenger. It can bind tightly to proteins and induce substantial structural rearrangement. This is, it binds to the negatively charged oxygen atoms. It also binds to the uncharged oxygen atoms, that is side chains of, side chains that we discussed, the side chains of glutamate, the side chains of glutamate. And aspartate, uncharged oxygen atoms and the side chains that is oxygen atoms of glutamine, the oxygen atoms of glutamine and aspartame. So these are the areas which can strongly bind with Ca2+. Calcium can coordinate multiple ligands from 6 to 8 oxygen atoms and calcium can also cross link different protein segment and this can cause protein conformational changes. Fura2 molecular imaging agent, Fura2 is a dye in fact uh, we use Fura2 to study the intracellular calcium changes. So Fura2 is a molecular imaging agent that can bind with calcium and change their fluorescent properties. Fura2 can bind with calcium through appropriately positioned oxygen atoms which are shown in red within its structure and thus when Fura2 is introduced into the cell the visible changes in calcium is detected with the change in fluorescence. Also we have calcium ion can activate the regulatory protein and the regulatory protein 
that it activates is calmodulin. What happens? Calmodulin is a 17 kilodalton protein and this calmodulin has four calcium binding sites MCQ. How many calcium binding sites for calmodulin? It has four calcium binding sites. Calmodulin is a member of EF hand protein family. EF hand is a calcium binding motif that is a helix loop helix motif and there are seven oxygen that are coordinated in each calcium. So each calcium is coordinated with seven oxygen. This is your calmodulin in apo form. Once the four calcium binds, it will get activated using enzyme calmodulin kinase to calmodulin kinase peptide where the calmodulin binds to the alpha helices. This calmodulin serves as a calcium sensor for nearly all eukaryotic cells. At cytoplasmic concentration, whenever it is above 500 nanometer, calcium binds to and activates calmodulin. Calmodulin undergoes conformation changes of the hydrophobic residues and the newly exposed surfaces can bind to other proteins such as CAM kinase 1 and it can get stimulated. This is your CAM kinase 1, it can get stimulated. Now we highlight what are what exactly is calmodulin. This is the diagram. So calmodulin is a regulatory protein that is used to detect changes in calcium ion concentration. So we have inactive calmodulin. This is an inactive calmodulin. See, there are four binding sites, and you can see, I'll just show you with the highlighter that all binding sites are empty right now that is why it is called as inactive this is two this is three and this is four the all four binding sites are empty immediately after this calcium ion comes it occupies the four binding sites of calmodulin now since calcium is bound we no longer call it as inactive calmodulin instead we call it as activated calmodulin and this activated calmodulin will interact with the target protein. So calmodulin is a regulatory protein that is used to detect changes in calcium ion concentration. If the cytoplasmic concentration of calcium raises above 500, calmodulin will begin to bind Ca2+. So what is the prerequisite condition over which the calmodulin will act? The prerequisite condition is the cytoplasmic concentration of calcium should be more than 500. Once it is more than 500, then calmodulin will bind with calcium. So calmodulin has a total four calcium binding sites. All the four sites are occupied. Calmodulin will undergo conformational change. A single calmodulin can bind four calcium ions. Upon binding to calcium, it induces a structural change in the calmodulin that activates it. And after activated, it exposes the hydrophobic region of calmodulin and this allows it to go on and bind to protein kinases. Because once the protein kinases are bound, only then inactive protein kinase to active protein kinase, the signal transduction will be complete. So what is this calcium signaling pathway? You have a calcium acts as a second messenger, calcium is increased. The signal is sensed by the second messenger binding protein calmodulin. Second messenger binding protein calmodulin acts to generate changes in enzyme that is calmodulin dependent kinases phosphorylates many different proteins and those phosphorylated proteins help in regulation of fuel metabolism ionic permeability of the cells regulation of neurotransmitter synthesis as well as 
neurotransmitter release so that concludes the calcium signal transduction pathway i would like to acknowledge ms meka dave my student and current faculty for helping me to truncate my presentation to make it short as per sardar patel university syllabus last but not the least thank you very much for your kind attention